How fast can the universe build a monster? This week, astronomers using Chandra witness a quasar breaking the so-called Eddington limit, feeding at rates textbooks once said were impossible. At the edge of M87 asterisk, the black hole's shadow stays steady, but its magnetic skeleton shifts like weather at the brink of infinity. India's UGMRT uncovers a millisecond pulsar hidden in the dense heart of Messier 80. Pluto's ghostly haze glows with its own heat in JWST data, rewriting what we thought we knew about its climate. We passed 6,000 confirmed exoplanets, model giant exorings that may soon be lisible, confront a repeating gamma-ray oddball that defies categories, watch a nearby red dwarf quietly add worlds and catch an interstellar comet hiding in test images weeks before its discovery. This is Anantum and beyond. You're watching Astro News Weekly, your roundup of the most important astronomy and astrophysics discoveries every single week. Chandra, a quasar breaking the growth limit. Astronomers using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory have found a quasar that seems to break the rules of black hole growth. The object RACS J0320-35 is feeding at a rate far above the so-called Eddington limit, the balance point where radiation pressure should push material away. So Feister's it as funnels to the A. Imagine a furnace with chimneys that vent the heat while the fire is still fed. This allows the black hole to binge on hundreds of solar masses per year. This matters because in the early universe, less than a billion years after the Big Bang, we already see billion solar mass black holes. Until now, their rapid growth seemed impossible in the available time. This new evidence shows black holes may have natural ways to cheat the limit. Next, astronomers will use ALMA and JWST to track inflows and winds around the quasar. To find out whether this is a rare case, or the missing link to how cosmic giants grew so fast. EHT Magnetic Fields at M87 Star 120 The Event Horizon Telescope has revealed magnetic fields around the black hole M87 star behaving in surprising ways. Between 2017 and 2021, the shadow of the black hole remained steady, but polarization maps showed the surrounding plasma changing fields twisting and flipping as if alive. These changes fit the idea of a magnetically arrested disk, where magnetic pressure repeatedly chokes and then releases inflowing material. Each release pumps energy into the giant jet blasting out of M87's core. It's like watching the heartbeat of a black hole for the first time, captured at the very edge of the event horizon. Why does it matter? because jets are among the most powerful forces in the universe, shaping galaxies and clusters. Understanding their magnetic engines is key to understanding how black holes affect their surroundings. Next, the EHT team will extend the timeline with newer data and apply the same method to Sagittarius A star in our own galaxy to see if this magnetic heartbeat is universal. UGMRT, first pulsar in Messier 80. India's upgraded giant Metriwave radio telescope has made a landmark discovery, the first pulsar found in the globular cluster Messier 80. This neutron star spins 232 times per second, locked in a tight 19-hour orbit with a companion star. What makes it exciting is the orbit's high eccentricity, a trait that creates a natural laboratory for Einstein's general relativity. By timing its pulses, astronomers can measure tiny effects like orbital precession, Shapiro delay, and even gravitational wave damping. Inside a dense cluster like Messier 80, such a system also tells us how stars interact and swap partners in crowded stellar cities. This discovery is not only a milestone for India's radio astronomy, but it also hints at a hidden population of pulsars in M80 still waiting to be uncovered. Next, astronomers will begin long-term timing campaigns with UGMRT and Meerkat to study this pulsar in detail and to search for more pulsars in the cluster's core. Repeating Gamma-Ray Oddball Astronomers have identified a gamma-ray source that refuses to play by the usual rules. Gamma-ray bursts are typically one-time events, 
either the collapse of a massive star or the merger of neutron stars. Brief, violent, and gone. But this object is different. It repeats on a cycle of hours to days, flaring and fading like a cosmic heartbeat. The light curve doesn't fit any known template. One possibility is a highly magnetized neutron star, a magnetar, releasing bursts of energy in fits. Another is a strange binary system, where one star feeds the other in sudden bursts, producing gamma flashes unlike anything seen before. Why does it matter? If confirmed, this would represent an entirely new class of high-energy explosions, forcing scientists to rethink the family tree of cosmic transients. Next, astronomers are preparing rapid response programs to catch future bursts across multiple wavelengths, hoping to finally pin down what powers this oddball in the high-energy universe. Roman, 3D dust mapping the Milky Way. The upcoming Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope will create the most detailed three-dimensional map of dust in our galaxy. Dust may seem minor, but it obscures and reddens starlight, making it hard to measure true distances and properties of stars. Without knowing where dust lies, we misread the structure of the Milky Way. Roman's Galactic Plane Survey will use precise photometry and parallaxes to chart dust clouds across billions of stars. With this, astronomers can peel away the obscuring veil and reveal the true skeleton of our galaxy, its spiral arms, star-forming regions, and hidden structures. Why is it important? A 3D dust atlas will become a cornerstone for galactic science, refining star formation rates and testing whether spiral arms are stable waves or transient features. Next, researchers are preparing to integrate Roman's data with Gaia and the Rubin Observatory, ensuring that once Roman launches, its dust maps will be ready to transform our view of the Milky Way. Exoplanets past 6,000 confirmed. This week, NASA's Exoplanet Archive crossed a milestone, more than 6,000 confirmed planets beyond our solar system. The total comes from a steady stream of discoveries, test light curves, radial velocity surveys, and even microlensing. Each new addition expands the diversity of known worlds, from hot Jupiters skimming their stars to compact Earth-sized planets around red dwarfs. Why does it matter? Reaching 6,000 planets means we now have a robust data set to study planetary populations. We can identify patterns, like how often Earth-sized planets occur, or how system architecture changes around different stars. This knowledge feeds directly into the search for habitable worlds. It also sets the stage for the next era. JWST is already studying exoplanet atmospheres, and Roman will soon provide wide-field surveys of thousands more. Next, the focus turns to small, cool, nearby planets, the best candidates for future biosignature searches. 6000 is not an end, it's the launch pad for the next decade of discovery. JWST, detecting giant exorings. Astronomers have shown that the James Webb Space Telescope may be able to detect giant ring systems around exoplanets. Using simulations with JWST's near-cam coronagraph, researchers found that rings can scatter starlight forward, making them easier to see than the planets themselves. In the right geometry, a ringed planet could reveal itself as a faint crescent or arc, even when the planet remains hidden. Why is this exciting? Rings tell us about a planet's history and environment. In our solar system, Saturn's rings are young and constantly evolving while Jupiter's faint rings are ancient and dusty. Finding large exorings could reveal how planets interact with debris disks, or even hint at hidden moons. Detecting or ruling out rings would add a new layer to exoplanet demographics. Instead of just measuring masses and atmospheres, we'd be charting architectures. Next, astronomers are drafting observing proposals targeting the nearest bright stars. If successful, JWST could make the first detection of a ring system outside our solar system. Pluto's atmospheric haze. Pluto continues to surprise us. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have detected thermal emission from haze particles suspended in Pluto's thin atmosphere. When New Horizons flew by in 2015, we learned Pluto's skies were layered with bluish haze, 
Now, for the first time, we see that haze glowing in the infrared, radiating its own heat. This changes how we think about Pluto's energy balance. Instead of being a passive smog, the haze itself contributes to heating and cooling over Pluto's 248-year orbit. This feedback could drive climate shifts as its atmosphere thickens and thins. Why is this important? Pluto is no longer just a frozen relic. It's a climate laboratory. By monitoring its haze glow, we can study how atmospheres behave under extreme conditions, far from the sun. Next, astronomers plan regular JWST checks and will combine them with ground-based stellar oculations. Together, they'll build the first true climate curve of a Kuiper Belt world. GJ536 adds a second planet. Astronomers have confirmed that the nearby red dwarf star GJ536 hosts a second planet. The new world, GJ536c, has about six times Earth's mass and orbits every 32 days, joining the smaller inner planet already known. Located just 10 parsecs away, this compact system is now an ideal target for detailed study. Why does it matter? Small planets around M dwarfs are the most common in the galaxy, but they're hard to characterize. Here we have two in the same system, shaped by the same star, but potentially evolving very differently. By comparing them, scientists can learn how stellar radiation and activity sculpt planetary atmospheres. Being so close also makes the system perfect for follow-up. If either planet transits its star, telescopes like JWST could probe their atmospheres directly. Next, astronomers are searching for transits with TESS and CHEEPS. A positive detection would turn GJ536 into one of the best natural laboratories for rocky planet science. TESS pre-recovers interstellar comet. A comet from another star system has once again wandered through ours. Known as 3i slash ATLAS, it is only the third confirmed interstellar object. But thanks to a clever technique, astronomers have found it in TESS images taken weeks before its official discovery. By stacking and shifting images, they traced the faint moving speck while it was still far from the sun. Why is this exciting? Early light curves show when the comet first became active, venting gas and dust. Interstellar visitors are rare, and every data point helps reveal what other planetary systems are made of. Unlike our local comets, which follow predictable orbits, each interstellar object carries unique chemistry and history from another star. This discovery proves that hidden treasures already exist in survey data, waiting to be uncovered. Next, shift stacking will become standard in sky surveys, giving us a head start on the next interstellar visitor. And maybe, one day, enough warning to send a probe. And that wraps up this week's discoveries. Black holes breaking growth limits, magnetic fields alive at the horizon, Pluto's glowing haze, and the 6,000-planet milestone. This is an Antum and Beyond. You've been watching Astro News Weekly, your weekly roundup of astronomy and astrophysics news. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check the description for full references. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week as we continue exploring the cosmos, one discovery at a time.